Hi, um, I'm Romain. Um, you can find me on social media on Eric Gilbert on Twitter. Um, I work at least as a backend software engineer. Um, I think we're hiring like crazy, so if you're like interested in job, you can contact me. Um, I've been a Python developer for about seven years. Um, I've started working on PyPy for about four years. Um, I started as a Google Sum of Code student, so I wrote um, Cython backend for PyPy, which didn't really work, um, as a lot of Google Sum of Code projects. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in bringing more libraries to PyPy. I think that's one of the like, pitfalls of PyPy. So I've worked also on NumPyPy, which is our own re-implementation of NumPy. And, I and I'm currently working on PyMetabiosis, which is um, a project I'm going to show in this talk. So my big problem with Python is that our implementation, like our main implementation, isn't that great. So how can we get better implementations? And well, without changing our language, because that's the language we love and use. So yeah, right now, what's, what's the problem with um, the current state of affairs? So CPython is like 98% of all Python like installations around. But it has like poor performance, and it has the infamous gear. Um, PyPy is like much less used. It's like probably like Linux on the desktop kind of market share. Um, it has much much better performance, and PyPy STM is going is showing like very very good progress, and so that's how we can potentially remove the gear. Um, and like Jython, Iron Python, and everything else, like according to PyPI stats at least, um, they're like virtually unused. Um, quite a few people like just use Jython for like orchestrating like Java stuff and stuff. So they don't use PyPI, but like in terms of PyPI stats, they're irrelevant. Um, and yes, in terms of like the general like language situation, so Go has appeared. Um, it's pretty fast, um, and it's great at concurrency. It has no gale, and it has very good constructs for building concurrent systems. Um, JavaScript is, well, the competition on JavaScript VMs is really heavy, so a lot of competitions, and it's really, really fast. Um, PHP, well, Facebook runs on PHP, so they worked on optimizing PHP quite a lot. Um, yeah, and well, we're still slow, that's kind of disappointing. And languages like Julia are also like created because of the defic deficiencies of Python. So um, yes, in terms of C extensions, it's pretty hard to switch between implementations because well, Almost everyone uses, especially in like by data, like 95% of people use NumPy, which is a C extension. So like you can't switch to C extension, like to um, alternative implementations if you have a bunch of C extensions. Um, C extensions, well, NumPy is useful, right? Um, but C Python can't change much because the C the C extension API is really like tied to implementation details. So, for example, you you really can't remove the gear from from C Python because of that. Um, PyPy, well, PyPy gets a lot better every day. We refactor a lot of stuff, improve a lot of stuff, but at the same time, C extension support is well, it's what it is. Um, so yes, if you see, like, if you look at um, the um, Python implementation market, basically, C Python is like keeping its user captive, right? You're you're using C extensions, and then your code depends on it, and then you're stuck. Um, and I think like much more uh, competition would be very beneficial 
Like even like I work on PayPay, so I'm a bit biased. But like if something much better than PayPay like came out, I think that would be like awesome for the community. Um, yeah. So like, why don't just doesn't just the PayPay team build like a CAPI implementation and be done with it? So even if we did. Um, like stuff like Cython use much more than the regular like official CAPI. Um, Cython likes to look inside the like structures and and stuff. So like that's virtually impossible to implement. Um, and well, if you do implement the official API, it makes a lot of assumptions. So and a lot of assumptions on things that affect performance. So if you if you implement the CAPI, you end up with something that's pretty close to CPython, including in terms of performance and gear. Um, for example, yes, reference counting, um, that's pretty slow and for removing the gear, it makes removing the gear impossible. So yeah, if, we, if you use the CAPI, then no performance and no concurrency, in pure Python at least. So um, how have other languages solve that problem? There are like two families of CAPI in general. Um, JNI and V8 use um, one kind of um, API that handles like references uh, much nicely. It's closer to to the CAPI than the Lua Julia family, which uses um, like virtual stack basically. Um, if you have written Lua or Julia code, then well, this would sound familiar. But like these CAPIs are basically just as performant and as useful as the CAPI, and they don't have the same deficiencies. Um, so can we have something similar to those APIs? Well, we can, yeah. Um, it's not like that much work. It's mostly like political work rather than technical work. Um, so we, the PayPay team, have implemented, well, I've written something called CFFI, which is, um, um, which stands for C function, find function interface. It works on PayPay and C Python, and you could use that to build a new API. Um, yeah, it's a lot of political work and trying to convince everybody. Um, and then, like, you still have NumPy and stuff, and people are, are just, are not gonna, like, rewrite NumPy from scratch in any time soon. Um, so yeah, that's why you would need to keep the current API and the new API for a while so that people like can start incrementally port their stuff. So where does PyPy fit in this, right? So implementations have deficiencies. Um, so how does PyPy fit in this and fixes those Efficiencies. So first of all, it's it's very flexible. PyPy is has a, is very like it's built in R Python, which is a language that allows us to basically like swap anything we want. If we want something more efficient, we can like very very quickly change change like how things work. And it's also built with a JIT inside, which stands for Just in Time Compiler. Um, you can check on speed.pypy.org. We have a bunch of benchmarks that we run um, every night on um, like nightly builds. Um, currently, it's seven times faster than C Python, which doesn't mean anything because well, each program is unique, so you might get like 1.2 times faster or like 1,000 times faster. Um, it competes with like JavaScript implementations and stuff like that. Um, and um, the concept behind the JIT is that you pay the cost of what you use, which means that, for example, in Python, um, integers are objects, which makes it um, slow. But if you don't use them as objects, then they are just use, uh, they're just imp like implemented as regular integers, which are as fast as well, like C-like languages. So yes, I have. A demo. Um, if the demo gods are um, nice, it will work. So let's say I have 
this video of me skiing, it's not me anyway. And I want to run um, edge detection on it. So um, I wrote something in pure Python, like it doesn't use NumPy, it doesn't use anything, just plain Python. And let's see how, how it works. Don't look at the negative FPS, that doesn't work. Uh, well, now it works, yes, after three frames it works. So, well, if I want to run like on a single image, it would probably be quite decent, right? But like, that's no only on like real time. So let's run it with PyPy. That's real time. Um, and to prove that it's not like, it's really real time. <laughs> that's real time. Like, it runs at 15 FPS, but that's because my webcam is too slow. It runs at like, if you remove the like FPS limit, it runs at like 250 FPS on, um, on the example I showed before. So, yes, back to the demo. So, um, yes, we're removing a lot of costs from like using lists, for example, like list on PyPy, if they are like just plain list of like integers or floats, they are basically like just C arrays. Um, so that's what allows us to have like very fast math on, in pure Python. So yes, I talked a bit about CFFI earlier. Um, so we all like to like interact with C code pretty easily. Um, a lot of libraries are written in C. Um, and yes, using them is very useful and using them like having a very easy way of interacting with them is very useful. Um, so CFFI, with, you can call any C function you want. Um, you can also expose Python functions. So just like the C API, if you want to embed Python, you can using CFFI. Um, you can also like implement part of your system in Python and like have um, another part in C and have the C called Python callbacks. Um, it's really really fast on PyPy. Um, we used uh, we used it to implement the um, um, PyPy plugin in USG, which is a web server. And basically, the load balancer couldn't keep up with PyPy. Um, and yes, you can do anything you can do with the C API, you can do it with CFFI. And yes, we all hate the gill. Like, the gill is not nice, it's evil. Um, so, we, work, we are working on something called PyPy STM, which stands for Software Transactional Memory. Um, you can look it up on Wikipedia if you're interested more, but basically it's a way of dealing with um, threads running in parallel, but um, without having to care about locking and threads and stuff like that. Like, locks are even more evil than the gill, so that's good. And you can still, it's not like multiprocessing where you have to like have your data completely separate between workers. You can have you can share memory as much as you want. Of course, if you like work on the same value all the time, then it's not going to be fast. So, what about like what can we do now to improve C extension support? So, um, I wrote a quick, like hackish thing that like could end up bringing like a lot of benefits. Um, basically, it's embedding C Python inside PyPy, and then you send, um, well, it's basically an RPC system between PyPy and C Python in the same process. Um, so I have also a demo. Um, so um, So this is PyPy. Can everybody see? Okay. Um, so I wrote my tool. 
Mm -hmm. um, let's have um, let's import a um, C extension. So um, matplotlib is one popular C extension. Um, um, PyLab is pretty slow to import even on C Python. So um, and let's start plotting stuff. And yeah, that's Matt Paltry burning on PyPy. So yes, to summarize, like we can do a lot better in terms of implementations as what we're doing right now. Um, PyPy is definitely working on like being the best implementation around. Um, but at the same time, having alternative implementations that you can't use because you end up like with tons of C extension that you can choose isn't like, it's not great. So like we should work on having an implementation independent ecosystem. Um, I think like it's quite a bit of work, but at the same time, it's very rewarding for the Python community in my opinion. So yeah, thank you. Um, you can find me if you have questions. And Laurie, thank you very much for my questions. Um, are you aware of any uh, non trivial production environment that uses PyPy? Um, I think, um, like, it's film, so I'm not sure I can say much. But <laughs> um, s big San Francisco startups with, like, a bird that its logo uses it, like, for some internet stuff, okay. um, some storage stuff. Um, like I'm not giving you names, but like. <laughs> well, I thought that I thought that particular company also has their own implementation called Python. Yes. So um, what's the similarity and difference? The difference it's like um, how to say this diplomatically. Um, so yes, basically it's built as a, like a different family of JustinTime compilers. Um, the creators of Python thinks it's better. Um, I'm not convinced. Um, like the last version shows that it's one percent faster than C Python, which means zero. Um, so like, but they're working on compatibility rather than performance. So like, wait and see. I'm not. I don't think it's going to be like a, a big player in the like last next few years. Maybe one day it will be like the thing that would kill PyPy. I don't know, but I'm not convinced. Detection demo. Can you say like which lines exactly contributed speed improvement? Um, just out of interest, like where 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 was the biggest? Well, like it's written like you would write it in C. So like you just iterate over um, a list of list of um, integers, and you just do like double loop and um, do math on it. So like it's a lot of like iter cost of iteration and math and stuff like that. Like. It's it's built very naively, but it performs really really well on PyPy. Russell, uh, do, you, do you think that focusing on C is a good idea? Because it's a language for writing operations, it's fine. But as the only language for writing extensions in Python, I'd say it's completely misdirected. CFI says you have got to supply C enterprise. Yeah. Um, well, C it's the only stable ABI around. Um, like if everything talks using C, right? If you want to talk to Java, you have to go through JNI, which is C. Um, if w you want to call Rust, um, the way Rust handles it is like you add some like annotation and it ends up with the C ABI. Um, it's the same with Haskell, I think. It doesn't. I want to connect it to C plus plus, D, Shackle, Rust, and so on. And CFI doesn't allow me to do it. Yes, it does. 
um, in the like CDEF part, like you write C, but it's really just like definitions of like C ABI stuff. So like you can call anything you want. You can you can definitely call Rust, um, for example, or like anything that supports the C ABI. You can you can do, do it. Like in the like verify part, like you can you can't really do it. Like it's C, but in the CDEF part, like you can put like C, de C ABI definitions, but like your implementation can be of any yeah, language. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think you should do that. Okay. Any other questions? Is everything uh, compatible out of the box with the, um, the, the meta uses you presented, like site intern and the whole of them by, or uh, just the uh, you need to do specific arrangements? Um, well, it's alpha software, so like there's missing, missing like types and stuff, but you can um, pass numpy arrays to any function you want. You can use, like, it's very, like, you don't have to do anything. Like, if it's not implemented, then like it's a bug on our side, but it's, it's a very thin layer that's like quite complete, and yes, you could call potentially scikit-learn. I think I should do like something about like having a proof of concept of running scikit-learn, but yes, it's pretty simple. So one more question, if we have one. Great. I'm working on a new project where I need to wrap a C library. So I started doing that by using CFFI, just because it's not nice writing a C extension. Can I, I've only tested on C Python, but can I just develop that and assume that it's going to work on PyPy? Using CFFI, or are there any other considerations? Um, on the like CFFI part, no, it's just plain. It just plainly works. Um, there are some. So PyPy has like delayed garbage collection. So like you can end up with. Um, you have to be careful that you explicitly free stuff that could potentially be magically freed on C Python as soon as possible. So like if you need like one instance of something at any time, like you have to make sure that you explicitly free it, for example. Like that's yes, garbage collection is you have to make sure of that. But like in terms of c just CFFI, CFFI just exactly the same way on PyPy and C Python. Thank you very much, Roman.